Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. This is my uh, second video for today, and um, I will probably make another one. I'm going to go to my favorite place here in Michigan for a little swim. So I'm going to probably make another one uh, from there. So um, I made a video earlier today. This is the second one with about seven topics. The first one, Finland. Um, or the Finnish Navy is in Ukraine at the Black Sea. I wonder what they will do. First topic. The second topic. Did you know that the Russians claimed, or some Russian claimed, they, they shot down four F-16s in that attack when they said one crashed? Well, uh, let me show you here how what the Russians are saying and what the other how the other ones debunk the claims. Now, I don't know if that happened. I'm just reading for you uh, the defense provided by the Ukrainians claiming that actually no, yet, yet there were no Adinva uh, Tre Chitere Chitere F 16s shot down by the Russians. Why? Because they say so, but they call it debunking. All right, there's a next article. <laughs> the Russians are trolling the Americans with the free media. Remember, the Americans ban uh, free media now, like the Europeans are way ahead of them. So the Russians project the RT logo on the US Embassy in Moscow. That's a, I don't know, Os Oscar move, Oscar de la Hoya. Now we're going to show you how the free media, free world, we are called free world, we ban the screening of certain documentaries of, or films that we don't like. But hey, you are free uh, as long as we allow you the freedom like this, tomorrow like this, tomorrow like this, tomorrow like this, and then, but hey, we're going to let you know you're free. Like here at the college in the US, you, you learn shit, you get a diploma, and they say, you are an educated person, you know better, and you don't know shit. And when you meet a, per a person really knowing shit, you're like, uh, no, 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 that's not true because I'm an educated person and I know I didn't learn that in college and no, you can find it on the first uh, option on YouTube or whenever. Why? Anyway, let's move on. So I'm going to give you examples of Zurich uh, Film Festival bans a Russian uh, movie. The other film, the other one, I will show you the Canadians did the same thing and why? Because of threats coming from the peaceful people who love freedom as long as freedom is only for them and not for us. Uh -huh. And I'm going to show you this Pistorius imbecile. He is the defense minister of the used to be great country of Germany. Uh, I think he is a, he is a, um, a danger for the Deutsche Volk. I think he is. Uh, he is going to tell us that why, no, actually how Putin hates certain characteristics of Europe, which are something that I will make a point, uh, the point are not in Europe, which is freedom of speech, freedom of the press. He says, because Putin hates this and he hates that, but they don't prove that in Europe. They just say it because if you say it, you are already. I'm a champion because I said it. All right. I'm, I don't know, a master of a painting because I say it. Got it? That's how it, but only for me, you can't do that. But hey, we are free and we are good. Now, I will let you know when the nuclear attack on NATO will occur. According to the UK foreign minister, Mr. Delamy, Delamy because he's French, like uh, Karine Jean-Pierre, the spokesperson of the White House, because she's French, Karine Jean-Pierre. Okay, or, I don't know, D'Angelo, or Diante, or, I don't know, Deschamps, they are French. I don't know, so Mr. Lemmy, I'll make it la le, le mi, I'll make it de le mi, okay? Uh, David de le mi. All right, let's move on. And the last one, well, we're going to find out maybe who blew up the Nord Stream pipelines. I think we already are 99% certain who did it, but we don't have the 1% beyond any reasonable doubt. And we have someone in Germany, a politician uh, belonging to a certain party, saying that Nord Stream pipeline must be restored. And that was an attack by... US and UK against an ally. Who's the ally? Uh, Deutschland, Deutschland. All right, let's move to the first article. Right here, Ukraine form. 
Well, it is these buddies. Finnish Navy delegation arrives in Odessa. Well, you are at war with me because look at these guys. That's the only vessel that uh, works. So these guys are having a good time. Good for them. Ukrainian Navy commander, vice admiral, and Finnish Navy commander, a rear, <laughs> rear from behind, admiral Tuomas. Tilikainen have discussed the priority areas of bilateral military cooperation in Odessa. You know where Odessa is? Let me show you. This is Ismail. Odessa is right here. And Odessa is at a port of Ukraine at the Black Sea. And in the big scheme of things is by Crimean Peninsula, by Wizard Romania. And here is Ukrainska. All right. This is Ukraine, Kiev. So here is Odessa. Here is where they are located. So, and out. So, they're over there discussing. In Odessa, and I'm quoting, the Ukrainian Navy commander held a meeting with representatives of the Finnish Navy, led by the commander of the Finnish Navy. Good for you. Nezi Papa. Jesus Christ, what name is that? Informed members of the Finnish delegation about the current security situation in southern Ukraine and the Azov and Black Sea region. Why? Why are you? What are you going to do about it? Hey. What are they going to do about it? As well as the result of any prospects for using the forces and assets of the Ukrainian Navy in the war against Russia. So that tells me, you inform someone about your war. Why would you do that? Because they probably are involved. You need help to what? With some money, some boats, some military personnel, some, uh, I don't know, colonels, generals, rear admirals. Anyway, that was the Ukrainians, if I remember correctly. No, it was the... Finish one. The other one was the Admiral. So that was the first one. Second one. Let's see about those F 16s. Four. Alright, let's go. Right? Do I know it? Alright, I think it was Ukrainian, wasn't it? Alright. Anyway, it's Russian, isn't it? Ukraine form. A Russian fake about Kornango destruction of four F 16s debunked. And I said, oh my god, let me see the evidence because you say they're debunked. Remember, this is going to be about like that. I say that, you say that, and we are watching. You know what we can do and we will do. We have no other options. Wait. Time is still a virtue. Time. Patience is still a virtue. Time will tell. That's what I was about to say. Russian propagandists are spreading false information about the alleged destruction of four F-16 fighter jets during Russian missile strike on September 26, 2024. This claim is untrue, because they say it, and it is intended to manipulate public opinion. Okay, well, could be. As reported by Ukraine Forum, the Center of Countering Disinformation under Ukraine's National Security and Defense papa, papa, address on Telegram. And I'm quoting, Russian sources, including propagandist Anatoly Sarhi, Sharhi, are spreading information about the supposed loss of four F-16 fighter jets during today's unexpected missile strike. This information, where is that? Wait, 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 September. Oh my God, this was two days ago. Uh, yesterday, I thought it was the one last month. Okay, so that's five will make it. Unexpected missile strike about the supposed loss of four F-16 fighter jets during today's unexpected missile strike. This information is presented without any evidence or con concrete facts. Such reports are yet another fake designed to manipulate public opinion, fabricated to push the narrative of ineffectiveness of Western aircraft. The statement reads. So this is debunking it. So basically you say, you guys did not provide any evidence, neither did I. Uh, we. All right. The center noted that Russian propaganda started circulating fake about fakes about F-16s being shot down even before these fighter jets were deployed to Ukraine. So this is your evidence. So if someone lied, I don't know, supposedly two years ago and is telling you right now, hey, they're going to come and get you right there, there in front of, of your yard, you say, no, you lied to me. I'm not going to take this threat seriously. Well, at least look into it, wouldn't you? Like we do right now. I just want to see what evidence these guys bring. They will not bring any, anything. They will, not. They, they will just say, no, it is not true. The other guy is going to say, yes, it's true. This guy is going to say, no, it's not true. And that's it. Have you seen that? So we know for a fact, for a fact, agreed by the Ukrainians and everybody else, that one F-16 crashed, it was not shut down, crashed uh, a month ago or something, or something like this, when the Russians attacked. 
We, that's a fact. Have you seen any videos of that? Did you see, have you seen any evidence? Were any evidence provided to you? Were any evidence, facts? You no, know, it was just someone coming in front of a TV, reading and say, or a teleprompter over there, uh, today uh, one uh, FC scene crashed by destroying 1,000, one, uh, one, how do you call it, Katralion uh, freaking uh, Russian missiles. And he just fell down because of uh, who knows why. It was just, you know, uh, friendly fire maybe or something. No, no, it was not. The F-16 is fantastic. Have they provided anything? No. It just came with an, an, a narrative. They told you something. The same here. They will come. What, what, the, what were the Russians supposed to give you? A videotape of the uh, F-16 being shot down? That would have been great to have that evidence. But you will not have it. You will not have it in this one as well. Remember when the Ukrainians provide a kind of, we shot uh, 89 drones out of 100 drones or something like this. Where is the evidence? They show you the bullshit, some wreckages, one or two of something. And then they show you that little drone thing with the Shahed drones and the missiles. And that's their evidence. Where's your evidence? Have you shown me any concrete evidence? No, you show me a picture when I don't know when it was taken, maybe two years ago. Right? When you indeed shot one and you do it from different angles. Or maybe you shot 10. What the hell? I mean, are you crazy? It's easy. It's easy. So these guys don't come with any evidence uh, either side, just to be sure that we mentioned that. As previously reported by Ukraine from in the early hour of September 26, Ukraine their defenses destroyed 66 enemy attack drones and four guided missiles. You have no evidence. Where is your evidence? How can you prove that's correct? Where is your evidence? Remember what they said here? without any evidence or concrete facts. Well, where it's yours? Where is yours? You destroyed 66 enemies. You just claim it. Report it. All right, that's it. That's it. So again, you, and that was debunking it. That's how they debunk the whole shit. By saying, it's not true. It's not true. Now, is it true? I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know if it's true that you downed the Russian missiles. Uh, have you heard that... Um, the Ukrainians don't down uh, anymore the Kinzhal missiles with the Patriot systems. Oh, because the Russians don't hit Moscow anymore with Kinzhals. Therefore, they're afraid to have a bad reputation for their Kinzhals, right? Yeah, could be. It's a possibility. All right, let's see how the Russians are trolling uh, the free world. Russian Day. RT logo projected onto US Embassy in Moscow. The United States government has recently issued new sanctions against Russia today and its State Department announced a new diplomatic campaign, and I'm quoting, to rally allies and partners around the world to join us in addressing the threat posed by RT. Tonight, as part of RT's response, the bright green RT logo is lighting up the facade of the US Embassy building in Moscow with a message, we're not going away. Not in the US, not in the West at large, not in the rest of the world. And here is the logo right there. We're not going away. That's exactly what's written down there. All right. Um, should we play this? No. All right. I'm afraid of YouTube because YouTube is very sensitive to telling the truth or showing facts. Uh, only some can provide facts. You can't. If I right now show you some, uh, I know, uh, how do you call it, an Abrams, Abrams tanks being blown up by a cheap Russian drone, and I show you that, the uh, YouTube will say, ah, but, uh, that's not uh, community guidelines. Uh, but if, I know, Ben Shapiro does it, that's just fine. I just give you a name out of many that can do no harm, no limits. So here it is, my friends. And with that, I will show you um, another freedom, the freedom that we enjoy. Zürich, that's uh, Switzerland, film festival officially cancels screening the, uh, this is according to the Ukrainians, propaganda film Russians at War. All right, well, I should be allowed to see anything. You should not ban shit, unless you know it's proper age. That's all I'm concerned about. Children and children, that's all. Children should not watch certain things, Adults should not watch certain things on children, but the rest, I should watch whatever is over there. I should be allowed to do it. If that's a criminal thing over there and they provide over there, it's the law enforcement's job to catch the criminals, not me looking at the product. Ah, uh, I you know that is supply and demand. Well, why don't you just uh, destroy the supply? Oh, you're going to destroy my demand for wanting to watch Russians at war, for instance? 
Emil is not banned in Europe. You can get it. No, I don't want the government to do that for me. Or the Zurich Festival. It already tells you they are censoring. I want to watch that. Why not? Oh, you don't want to see the other story? Oh, it's a propaganda. But yours is not? Correct. All right, you lose me there. Next one. Oh, we have something else. We have Toronto International Film Festival suspends screening of the same film on Russian soldiers after threats. So this is not the uh, uh, no, uh, far right or the Russian threat. No, are, are the good people of something. And here it is, a guy with the Ukrainian flag at Scott, uh, Scott yeah, BBB Theater. Scott Bank Theater. So again, threats. Threats and they will do it. Now, remember, if people will issue threats, let's say, and I'm not, I'm not supporting that, that whatsoever. Let's say people uh, 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 issue threats, let's say, to the US government saying, hey, if you guys uh, send more weapons to Ukraine, this is going to happen. Let's say, what do you think the US government should do? Just stop and say, okay, we're not going to send it because some threaten us. Do you think they will do that? They will not. They say, fuck you. Who are you? Let me find you. And they will find the guys with threats for the re good reason. They will find them, they will arrest them, prosecute them and charge them and convict them for issuing threats. That's how I learned. You don't back down, we don't negotiate with terrorists, okay? That's the whole purpose. These guys are terrorists, are trying to create terror, therefore you change your political stance or your decisions. But hey, here it's acceptable because it's the Russians. But in, let's say, in political issue, no, it's not. No, we don't negotiate with terrorists. We don't turn them to We don't, we don't, uh, how do you call it? We don't um, uh, pulge to pressure to criminals. We don't. But here they do. Why is that? Where's the law enforcement? Why don't they catch them? Or you try to prevent it? By prevention, you're not going to allow anybody to drive a car with a speed uh, higher than uh, five miles per hour. Why? Accident prevention or ride the bike on the road. You can't do that. Maybe, I don't know, a big fucking semi-truck will gonna run you over. Prevention. Don't ride bikes anymore. Ride them in your home. But hey, the, the certain bikes, little ones, so you don't, uh, when you fall, hit your head and you die. Jesus Christ. All right, so this is the freedom of speech that we all enjoy in Canada. Oh, Canada. And in Zurich, Switzerland. All right, let's see some more. Hollywood, pop, pop, pop. A rape, violence, abuse, the threats that led to Toronto Film Festival to pull Russians at war. Oh, they're so concerned with these things. But Hollywood has a lot of shit like this. I don't want to see the truth or you can't handle the truth. Well, go back. I want it. I don't want people who have a soft heart or are weak or cowards to tell me that I should not enjoy life or learn or expose myself to experiences. That's exactly what they're trying to do. And by democracy, they can do that. Or by threats in this case. But if the other ones are threatening the baboons, hey, no. Why? Because this is a selective so-called freedom, justice for all Metallica's album, right? So, TIFF CEO Cameron Bailey said hundreds of threats against staff led to the festival's unprecedented decision to pull Anastasia Trifimova's con controversial documentary. It's a documentary. Now, she's a woman. I think these guys are uh, sexist. Again, patriarchy hits again. No, we don't even mention that. Who's this baboon here? Oh, this is the guy. Ah, yo, my God. This is the guy. Look at his face. So, this is the guy in... Oh, shit. This is Mr. CEO Cameron Bailey. He uh, tells you he's the Canadian culture maker. Good job. Good job, man. Good job. And uh, they, t I don't even. And then you have, I'm done with this. Let's move to the next one, which tells us Pristorius. This is, I think, he's, he's not working for the Germans' uh, interest or Germany's interest. This is the defense minister. He's going to get far, far, far away. <laughs> Lord Harquard or whatever it was in the Shrek. Hardcard or hardcard. Anyway, Germany's Pristorius says for Russia, Ukraine is only the beginning. Why is that? If it's only the beginning of, for, with Ukraine, uh, that means that uh, bombarding Yugoslavia by NATO and by you guys was only the beginning. Why this only applies to Russia, but not to everybody else? Okay, when the Americans bombarded Yugoslavia, then bombarded uh, and invaded Iraq, and it was only the beginning, it seemed like that means the next one was what? 
Afghanistan. And the next one was what? Libya. And the next one was what? Syria. And the next one was what? Well, maybe Iran. Hey, well, next one, which one is maybe it's North Korea. No, they got nuclear weapons. No, stay away from that one. Oh, in Taiwan, maybe we got some China. Oh, they got nuclear weapons. Oh, uh, take it. In. Oh, maybe Ukraine. So you see, if you use the same logic for you, why don't you use the same one for these guys? I tell you why, because these guys speak in religious terms, in dogmatic terms. I'm all good. They are all evil. And all evil is like, why did he do it? Oh, it makes no sense. No, no, it's irrational. Irrational sense of uh, having this human feelings. But hey, it's irrational because we don't want to provide the right answer. Remember? Hitler. Yes. The most evil guy in the whole world. Uh, why did he do it? Because he's evil. That's all. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's good. Why did they hate us? Uh, they hate our freedom. Remember that September 11 garbage? Why did they hate us? Why did they hate us? Mm, they hate our freedoms. And they came to you because they just hate your freedoms? Yes. All right. So let's see what this imbecile says. Right here. Pistorius. He says, he claims that, but here it is. All of this level, no doubt, for Russia, for Russian President Putin's Russia-Ukraine is only the beginning, he says, because he knows. For Putin, he says, the free and democratic way of life is the real enemy. A uh, hello, uh, <clears throat> a hello. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, hello. So, uh, and if you want, I can go right here too with uh, this. Who is the free world again? And Pistorius, uh, Putin, will you put right here? Putin uh, is Mr. Putin for you or President Putin for you because he was elected. You weren't. So it's kind of disrespectful for you to uh, just say that. But hey, you can say it. it. You're living in a free world. So don't make me make the case of how free the Europeans or we supposedly are. If I go to work right now and I say, no, I think it's only two sexes and two genders. Do I keep my job? I'm guaranteeing you I will be called out, called in an office and reprimanded for that. Uh, but I'm free. Or if let's say I say there's no moon on the sky. None doesn't exist. Do you think anybody will call me in the office and say, Emil, you are a moon denier? No. Why is that? We don't care about that one, man. We care about this particular subject. Okay, let's move on. <sighs> so we find out when the atomic war will begin. According to Mr. Delemy of uh, Great Britain, UK Foreign Office expects permission for Western weapons strikes on Russia to be approved by early winter. So when they will approve that in early winter, the strikes, the Russians will use nuclear weapons. Got that? They said they will. So this is El Emi. Well, small head. What's going on here? So this guy, a small head means something inside of it is not too big. But hey, what do I know? It's a fact that the size of your head, it's an indication of the potential. And I'm not saying that. That's, uh, oh, we don't believe in that one in science. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not a biologist. I can't cite uh, evidence based on studies because I'm not a biologist. You remember that imbecile who now sits on the Supreme Court? Don't close that door, wind. All right. Yeah, I'm speaking, I'm talking to wind. I'm a wind whisperer. All right. You remember when that, what was it? Uh, Katanji Jackson, Katanji Jackson. Now she sits on the, sits on the Supreme Court of the United States. She said, Miss Katanji uh, Jackson, um, you are uh, nominated for the position of a uh, high court, blah, 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 justice in BBB, Supreme Court. Uh, how many genders are there? How many? What, what, what's a female? What's a man? I'm not a biologist. And how is that baboon supposed to really look at cases if she's not a biologist? There are going to be probably issues with, I don't know, driving. She's not, a, I don't know, a bus driver. So if she's going to uh, oversee a situation where you have a problem with a bus driver or a a bus, she can't because she's not a bus driver, she doesn't know it. Or if she's going to deal with a man, she doesn't know because she's not a man. So she can't actually talk about that. You see, and this is the free world that we live in. It's a perversion 
then perversion means outside of normality. That's why it's perversion. And this guy, the little head, Udelemi, that's why I'm going to call him right, right now. Remember, Kuleba was the big head, round head. This is the small head. I would write there. A decision to leave restrictions on Ukraine's use of long-range weapon, weapons, Western weapons against military targets in Russia may be made by early winter. Ooh, and everybody, yes, yes, yes. That's when they will nuke you. All right. UK Foreign Secretary David Delemy in an interview with Voice of America, sponsored by the who? Who? Who funds those? I think the US government as well. I know CIA was involved and uh, State Department. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But they are not state owned. No, 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 no. They're not propaganda outlets. No, no, no. The baboons Romanians in the communist times were all glued to the, to the radios. All right. To the radios, uh, listening to the Voice of America and to the Free Europe, thinking they are just want to help us with information. Yes and no. When I found out after 1990, they were funded by these guys. I said, oh, they. And I knew that, you know what? Someone told me from the security. I said, those guys are just propaganda. I said, ah, yeah, yeah, just because you are. No, he was right, 100%. So here, now we know when that is going to happen. Let me stress that they expected there he expected there to be a very strong position in the coming weeks to provide Ukraine with everything it needs. Got it? So that means you know when this will happen. In early winter, you're going to have a nuclear war. If they do it. Because they could say, you know what? We're not going to bow down. We're going to give them the right. But it doesn't mean they will take the right and use it. You know what I mean? Give them the right. Yeah, you, you can do it. And let's see if the Ukrainians will do it. Now the Russians are waiting. And find out. They said if they're going to be a massive, if we have intelligence, according to the new Russian doctrine of nuclear use, nuclear weapons use, that Putin lowered yesterday or talked about lowering it yet. Uh, they said, well, if we have reliable information, credible information, enemies from the intelligence, we can fudge it that an attack with drones, massive attack, attack with drones on our infrastructure or wherever we feel threatened, subjective feeling, okay, I can feel be threatened by this camera right here. <laughs> My pussy hurts. And therefore, I'm going to smack it because I'm strong in the same time as weak as I am. These guys are saying, I'm a strong woman, but then, uh, I'm a strong. How in the fuck are you strong? You always ask for perks. I'm talking about certain groups here. I'm strong. I'm as smart. I'm ever smarter than you. But I want a little bit of head up. You know, I want to be uh, given a forehand, something before you, so I can start early. But I'm as good as you are. Then why don't you give me if you're better than I am and just win? You know, they give you a child uh, a head start. You know, you're gonna beat the child to the deadline over there. I know, 100 yards. You're gonna you know, go, child. And you know, like the rabbit, like the hare, with that turtle. That's what you do. But no, they want, they say they are the, the rabbit, but they want a, a head start. The same with these imbeciles. Remember, you and I are supposed to be boom, boom, boom and fight for them. They will not be touched. If they are touched, one of them is touched hum, somehow by the Russian missiles or something. They will start negotiating with the Russians yesterday. So this is, sorry for disclosing the exact time when this will occur. Now we have the Nord Stream pipelines. And here it is, Sputnik. Nord Stream pipelines must be restored. German lawmaker, uh, obviously from Alternative für Deutschland. Nord Stream gas pipeline were blown up by enemies of German energy sovereignty. I think that's correct. And the pipelines must be rebuilt to secure and secured. The co-leader of the right wing alternative for Deutschland party, Tino Trupala, said on Thursday, and I'm quoting, today marks two years since the enemies of German energy sovereignty blew up Nord Stream and an artery of German industry was cut. Correct. Who would do that? <laughs> Someone who wants to destroy you. The Russians? No, because they made the pipeline with you. It's impossible? No, but we have someone big, big impo uh, possible. Al Capone. Our faction in the Bundestag demands an investigation and punishment for all those responsible. Nord Stream must be repaired, launched and secured, Trupala said on his social media. All right, so uh, I think that's correct with um, the assessment with who did this, the, uh, who blew up this one, enemies of the German uh, sovereignty, energy sovereignty. 
And here is the Western interference in other countries' domestic affairs. Clear and nice, written by Agency France Press. US allies urge pressure on Venezuela's Maduro after disputed vote. I think that's their business and you should stay out of it. As everybody stood out of it of uh, 2000, 2000 election between Al Gore and the imbecile Bush, remember? Nobody said, well, I think uh, Gore won and you should allow truth to come out by allowing them to count the votes again. But nobody said that. Why? Interference in our election, blah, blah, blah. Here they have US and others. It's not your country's back off. Uh, Venezuela has oil. Lots of it. So we're going to be very much interested. So who's actually interfering in other countries' domestic affair? Domestic affair. Maduro? The Russians? Imagine the Russians. Imagine the Russians will say, uh, well, the elections from, let's say, 2000, whatever, were uh, rigged and it's not true and we should restore the democracy in the US. Well, let's say they would say that. What do you think these guys will say? So what do you think Maduro would say? Uh, you have your family, you have your house. I have my family, I have my house. If I have the right to get in your houses and families affair, you have the same uh, right to get in my household affair. But somehow the rules world, rules-based world order that Americans are talking about, these guys in charge of us, apply only to weak people and the ones that we designate. We can do whatever we want. Well, I don't want that because it sounds to me like... Uh, master-slave uh, relationship or I don't know vassal and master or Al Capone and weasels how we want to take it you like that well I hope that happens to you you know in real life and I guarantee you you won't like it unless you're a, a, a masochist but you're not thank you very much for being with me again today stay strong stay smart look for the truth and be just